Hello there, Sir from 17 once again, introducing you to the Azura's Wrath demo. This is the first episode that you can choose, which is episode 5, the Hollow Victory. And uh, this is probably my most eagerly awaited game of the early months of 2012. If you don't know what this is, this is a, a Capcom produced crazy action game. And uh, that aside, I don't really know too much about it aside from the nuances of the story, which I'm not going to go into because it's only a demo and you're going to get thrown into the thick of it. Uh, all you need to know is this this demo is a little disappointing in my opinion because you don't really get a full sense of how the game is going to play because it's only it's two boss fights. Both fo boss fights are really different and they're probably not a representation of what you do in between the boss fights. But it's still cool and I did enjoy it. And uh, anybody who is a big fan of, you know, combat-based animes, like your, your Dragon Ball Zs and your Naruto's and things like that, you're probably going to like this because this is exceptionally dramatic, it's an exceptionally over-the-top, it's epic in scale, it's uh, two muscled men shouting at each other, it's all that good stuff. It's pretty much what you could expect from it. And uh, this first boss fight is against Wizen. And uh, this this stab is kind of interesting because it's, it's really fun and it's, it's really weird, but... You, you can't invert the controls for it, so I had to kind of just play it the normal way, and you'd think the right analog would move the aimer, but it's actually the left analog that does so. But the best way to get through that, which you will not have any difficulty with, because this is not really a walkthrough, it's more of just a playthrough and an impressions, if anything else, because uh, when I was recording this on the second boss fight, I actually let the boss kill me so that I could do a cleaner run on him, because I'd figured out a couple of different strategies that proved to be completely wrong. And uh, it took ages for the boss to kill me. It's, it's, it's more difficult to, to to lose on this game than it is to win. It's it's, it's kind of crazy. But you'll notice there's a lot of quick time events. There's a lot of these little dramatic sections. And the timing on them isn't too hard at all. I don't know why I got the great on the first one. I must have just been a bit complacent. And later on I actually get a good. And if I'm completely honest, didn't even know good existed because I'd not fucked them up that much. But on the recording run, lo and behold, I make myself look like a giant retard. But, yeah, this is, this is going to be really crazy and really interesting. But... It does make me wonder what it's going to be fully like, because these, these boss fights are pretty much interactive cutscenes, and uh, it's, it's left me wondering a few things about the game's difficulty as well. And the, the one thing that I'm hoping for, which kind of disappointed me in the demo, is you, you can't change difficulty in the demo, so you can't replay these episodes on, on harder challenges to see what the game is like when you bump it up. But I hope that the, the final retail release has got some sick-ass difficulty. If it aren't, because if it isn't, it's <laughs> it's going to be a little bit disappointing. Because I imagine it's going to be kind of short. But this is all just impressions from the demo, and there's not really all that much you can tell aside from that it's going to be crazy and it's going to have some interesting, really really interesting set pieces. And this is one of them, and this is kind of good because you do get control of it, and it reminds me of Sin and Punishment. And you'll notice when you fire at the ship, that that bar below your health and below your your anger bar. It, it builds up towards that unlimited thing, but I'm not too sure what that mode even does. And uh, on this bottom floor as well, the the lasers of the, the ship will shoot in three different directions. They'll stray from, from right to left, and enemies will attack you when you're on the ground. But the enemies are so weak, you can kill them in like two punches. And then the missiles, you can deflect with a, a quick, well-timed press of Y. The, the only problem with the, the missiles themselves and deflecting them is when you press Y with Azura, he does his, his, his strong attack, which makes him do a shout, and he spins around and does a shockwave move, which I don't really like at all, because when I tried using light attacks and then mixing in heavy attacks, every single time he just did the big shout move. He never, you know, he never turned into a combo or changed the move he did, so it makes me wonder what the combat's going to be like. And I'm not worried, I'm just apprehensive, because... It could be kind of mashy, and I hope it is, and I want it to be more skill-based, like your, your Devil May Cries and, and whatnot. But this demo really does not give you the appreciation of that. It gives you the appreciation of the bosses. And this one, you never actually get a chance to punch him or anything unless you're in a cutscene. It's all done through the the, the side-scrolling Lilac Wars, Panzer Dragoon-style shooting sections, like this one right now, which is scrolling left to right and shooting him. Uh, whenever those orbs come near you, if you jump, you should get be able to, to move away from them. And it's just a case of, of mapping all the targets you can and releasing the Y button to, to hit them and cash in those those lock-ons. And if any missiles come near you, you press Y to knock them back. It seems almost too, too simple of, of a fight. And I'm hoping 
when when the main game comes out that when you fight this guy maybe you'll fight him when he's little because anybody that does watch animes that are like this they always start out as a general dude until they realize that they can't win and then they get huge to try and win and it never works so maybe the boss fights will be you know levels long maybe we'll fight this guy before he turns into a giant sumo fat wrestler buddha statue thing who knows but a couple of things that put me off about the the demo aside from not being able to put it on a harder difficulty and the fact it didn't let you play an actual level is is some of the music on on the second fight is it's a little bit three blind micey and a bit annoying but I suppose it's something that you'll get used to when you play it and I hope the sound effects as well are a little bit more you know highly tuned compared to the music because the the audio balancing on the game it makes some of the impacts not as heavy as they should be it's a bit of a shame because everything about this game is about anger and it's about impact and it's about getting a good on a quick time event that I've never messed up before until I recorded which is <laughs> always funny but as far as a representation of what, what the fights will be when it comes to bosses, I've, I've got high hopes for them to be crazy ones because I look at it like this. Games uh, are not like trailers yet. They don't generally show you know all the best bits in the, in, the, in the trailer or in the demo. So if these are the boss fights that they were willing to show for a demo before the game came out, just imagine how good some of the boss fights in the game are going to be because these ones are really fun and, and really crazy. So it... Like the sky is the limit for this game, and uh, I do believe that this is the year for action games. As as far as last year was the year for first-person shooters, because we've got a reiteration of Devil May Cry, we've got a new Ninja Gaiden, Ninja Gaiden 3 coming out, we've got this coming out. There's there is a lot of action titles that are that are popping up on the radar, and uh, that makes me a happy bunny because they are some of my favourite type of games. But this is Wizen of the Seven Deities. <laughs> He's now grown to the size of a of an exceptionally large planet <laughs> and uh, it just goes kind of crazy from here on out and you'll notice that this is a cutscene because it crops the screen those black lines at the top and the bottom are literally because it is a cutscene and due to the aesthetic of this trying to be like an anime like a series it does the the adverts in the middle the the little mid cutoff point which is a cool touch it's an interesting touch and anybody that does appreciate anime will definitely see that as a knowing wink because there's a, a lot of, of anime influence in this, which is always a good thing. As we take on Gongan Wizen, which isn't much of a fight in all essence, it's more of a quick time event. <laughs> but like on this section here, when it when he attacks him with his, his giant Buddha finger of doom, it, it's like it goes and it impacts with the earth and you see the, the currents coming away from his hand from the impact and all the debris and that but it doesn't move the clouds it's like come on people if you're gonna make this thing touch the earth with a giant finger of death uh, at least give it some residual effect <laughs> but you want to be always watching the screen cause you never know when the, the quick time events are going to pop up they involve moving the analogs as you've just seen then they involve pressing B a lot, B and Y seem to be the favourite buttons to press and there are a lot of them that want you to bash B so if you're not very good at you know international track and field you may have some issue with, with the bashing but you don't have to get carpal tunnel to, to, to overcome them and that's another thing that it makes me wonder for the, the harder difficulties if it makes the tapping more difficult I don't like that at all that's just going to be like Metal Gear Solid during the torture sequences which was really unfair because you had to be a bloody robot to get past some of those but there is Wizen's giant finger of death. A little bit more exposition as it sh gives us a reason to get mad. Because everybody knows when, when watching animes, if they don't see somebody get injured or if they don't remember that they were abused as a child, they don't get mad enough to beat the enemy. And they never beat the enemy until he's finished, you know, beating up their entire family and talking for 20 minutes so that they can get the strength to come back and, and overcome. But that's what we like about them, I think. That's why we watch them, and that's why we talk about them so fondly, because they've got those really contrived, dramatic moments that are ridiculous. And this game looks no different. <laughs> As we come back to life, bash B and start raising his giant finger. <laughs> you do not like a giant finger! And I wonder how the arm mechanics are going to work as well, because when you enter unlimited mode, which is when you build up that little bar below your life and below your anger bar, he grows the six arms, and I think it, it makes it so that he's uninterruptible. It, I don't think he can be knocked over or, or knocked back as much. It, it could be the equivalent of Devil Trigger, something like that. But so far, it, the, 
the imperative in this game seems to be building the, the bar below your life. It seems to be how to build the anger bar as soon as possible to enter burst mode to, to overcome the boss. And uh, who knows, maybe it'll be like a puzzle game in essence, just finding the quickest way to, to build up your meter to, to overcome. As we punch back towards Wizen, we listen to the dramatic music and his arm gradually sets on fire from the kinetic energy of our our dragon punch or whatever the hell we just did to him and he says we here and I'm not too sure why I need a we and you know the universe blows up and we win <laughs> but yeah folks this is probably the craziest demo I've played in a long time a lot of it reminds me of Bayonetta because Bayonetta had some ridiculous quick time events and ridiculous sections where you were beating up giant bosses and you can tell there is a massive influence in that and uh, if you ask me that is not a bad thing so anything that is inspired or trying to you know at least take some of the good things that Bayonetta did is a developer you want to keep your eye on and, uh, this is the end of Hollow Victory anyhow we get a lovely little bit of exposition here from this character who's voiced by Robin Atkins Downs it's pretty much got the lines of the demo I really liked the, the little bit of you know I'm questioning things that you won't get an answer till you play the game we're getting all introverted and moody, but the second episode will be up following this one, and it is the final lesson against the master, or the guy that trained you. So look forward to that, people. I look forward to this game, and I will be definitely making a walkthrough, so equally look forward to that. And you take care now.